Is facial recognition something to fear? In some ways, COVID-19 gave us a reprieve on facial recognition. Pretty hard to do it with masks. And to be honest, I'd probably be happy to use a mask on a regular basis as long as I can socially get away with it. Unfortunately, the majority of you may not know the implications of facial recognition tech and how this is being misused. Many of you may not like my Orwellian references, but at least hear me out and see if this tech can be used against you. I'll give you many surprises today. Facial recognition is being done automatically in more places and apps than you actually realize. And this database is growing like crazy. Does this have any major effect on our privacy? Hang out with me for the remainder of this video and you will find out. Most people are not aware that even common day-to-day -day activities are tied to facial recognition. And I'm not talking about facial recognition for secure entry to your phone. Simple events like going to the supermarket will subject you to multiple instances of facial recognition. That's how bad it is. Jogging around your neighborhood, taking selfies on your phone, seemingly innocuous events in your life include facial recognition. This is very bothersome because you expect facial recognition when going to the airport or visiting a government facility, but taking a walk in your own neighborhood? The problem is that some of you are unwitting participants in the facial recognition infrastructure and many others of us who are aware of the tech cannot do anything about it. In this video, I will tell you where facial recognition occurs, including unexpected places. Then I will explain a little bit about how facial recognition is done and how it is evaded. Then finally, I will explain why this is such a big deal why facial recognition will affect our privacy and ultimately our freedom. But before I continue, I'd like to tell you about the library platform, LBRY. I post my videos there ahead of YouTube and it would be great if you join me there. So far, close to half the number of my YouTube subscribers are on libraries so and that's significant. It's not censored, so it offers an alternative for me and there's a link in the description so you can join me there as well. Also, this video is self-sponsored by Bytes VPN, which is me. Bytes VPN is used by my Brax routers and we have servers worldwide now. Check out my links to my store in the description. So what are these unexpected instances of facial recognition? In my city alone, Los Angeles, there are street cameras actively taking facial recognition shots. You will get traffic tickets with your face prominently recognized based on your driver's license. I have seen these traffic tickets in action and it actually states that they use facial recognition. Los Angeles also uses cameras on the freeway as part of fast track. In addition to street cameras to actually track both your face and your license plate. This was well publicized when the LAPD used it for pre-crime tracking of people associating with gang members. It was done through a contract with Palantir, which did the pre-crime analysis of the profiles of people living in gang areas. Google publicly states that they do facial recognition on your photos in Google Photos. So if you upload your photos there, it would behoove you to be aware of this. Apple also does facial recognition of photos sent to iCloud. They want to suggest photos to your friends, so that is their excuse. Facebook is the world leader in facial recognition. Just being on Facebook exposes you to constant facial recognition tied to your Facebook account. If you've not been hiding in a cave like me, then perhaps your face has been tagged in Facebook. Tagging, as you know, is suggested by Facebook when they recognize someone as being a friend. Obviously, they can recognize everyone even if they're not a friend. If you walk around Disneyland and a family next to you takes a photo, if you are in the shot and post it to Facebook, 
then Facebook will know you were in Disneyland at that exact time in GPS position. This is pretty insidious, by the way. I've watched John McAfee do public photos in various places like restaurants while he's supposedly in hiding. But then what if he's in the background of someone taking pics nearby for Facebook? He'd be sucked. In this case, he personally told me that he wears a disguise in public. I hope normal people don't have to do this. Here's another new way you don't even think about. Ring cameras. Anybody here buy a ring camera? Sorry, it's a dumb move. And yes, you will likely get upset with me and hit the dislike button. I hope you don't and hit the like instead. But do you understand what you signed up for when you got Ring? It means it's okay with you to upload your videos to Amazon for facial recognition and have those videos be available for use by law enforcement or anybody else with a government contract like Palantir. And what's worse, when I jog around the block, my neighbor's ring cameras are basically spying on me and sending my information about my location to third parties and I can't do anything about it. Well, I can hack the ring cameras if I had time, but otherwise I'm being zucked by any of you near me that buys one of these. Do you understand that Ring is promoted by law enforcement because of this particular availability of videos that they get access to? The promotion, by the way, it's an actual contract. Amazon tells them that they can get access to the videos as long as they promote Ring. This keeps getting worse. Our lack of ability to deny permission to facial recognition is very frustrating. Anytime there's a camera, we now have to worry. Where are the newest cameras being added? Well, how about the autonomous vehicles? New 2021 model cars will be partially self-driving now, not just Tesla. Many models will have this kind of capability. To do any kind of autonomous driving means lots of cameras on your car. In fact, a car like a Tesla will be driving around and basically enable the possibility of tracking any person on the street that was spotted by the car camera. For safety reasons, Teslas will definitely have a record of every person it encounters on the streets. Where does that video go? Obviously, you've seen the playbacks of the car videos and accidents. The car is recording video. Here's another one that you folks may not think about. If I can take a picture of you, which of course I can, I can use Google reverse image search to find out who you are on the internet. And that's just me as a regular person. Anybody not know about Google reverse image search? Search by pic instead of by text search. Can you imagine the access of Google and Facebook people, employees, if they have access to facial recognition from Google photos and Facebook photos, and they have a reverse image search capability, which of course they do. Facebook, by the way, refined facial recognition because many of you have uploaded thousands of pics on Facebook. So it's AI keeps learning. How does facial recognition work? So far, most facial recognition is done by looking at the proportions of your face relative to the position of your eyes, ears, nose, mouth, and sometimes eyebrows and chin. There are various algorithms for doing this. I'm going to refer to this as 2D facial recognition since the analysis is performed on a flat image. Most of it is done by AI machine learning. If you don't want to write code for facial recognition, you can just send your images to Amazon AWS and they will process the images for you. So today it's easy for any app to do facial recognition through the use of Amazon AWS. This same tech is being used heavily also by police and other law enforcement. And of course, Amazon AWS is also used by ring cameras since it is owned by Amazon. There have been many complaints in the press about the Amazon AWS recognition being imperfect. For example, it was tested against the African-American members of Congress, and some of them were identified as criminals by this facial recognition. The AWS facial recognition was claimed to have flaws with dark-skinned faces. For obvious reasons, it means the AI cannot demarcate the position of the eyes versus nose and mouth. This will be true in the dark as well. But this inaccuracy is a problem if the users of the tech don't acknowledge that it is not perfect. 
Facebook also uses this kind of recognition logic, meaning eyes, nose, and mouth alignment. But because of large volumes of data, the AI, I'm sure, is able to capture all the different angles of a face in a much better way than Amazon. As of 2013 or so, they've already reported 98% accuracy with facial recognition. Do you think there will be any improvement seven years later? I'm sure Google will strive to reach that same level of accuracy for those of you feeding its AI via Google Photos. There are other ways of doing facial recognition. Some do contour mapping of your face. For example, that's done by iOS phone facial recognition as well as the Pixel 4. So this is done by a combination of laser and infrared. I'll refer to this kind of facial recognition as 3D facial recognition. Fortunately for us, this kind of facial recognition doesn't have a big database yet. If the government uses facial contour mapping with infrared on our driver's license, we will get zucked big time because infrared can be used even with a mask. In fact, your iOS phone is able to validate your face even with sunglasses, even if your face is partially obscured by inanimate objects. This is a scary future potential. We'd have to wear some facial device that interferes with these detectors. And of course, they will pass laws to ban such devices. In some countries like Denmark, I was told they actually banned the use of masks on the street before COVID. That was because of facial recognition. Maybe my Danish friends will give me an update on this after COVID happened. For the moment, we can get away from some aspects of 2D facial recognition because of COVID. If you block your nose and your mouth, the facial recognition cannot work. Or if you wear sunglasses, you can try it yourself. It is difficult even with a human to recognize people entirely from a face alone if they're wearing a mask. And this is from personal experience. Usually if you can't see the person's entire body to add to the input, it is very difficult to get who it is with a mask face. So what's the big deal with actually getting facially recognized through these automated means? Would you like to walk around with your name, address, and birth date and a permanent ID attached to you at all times and big enough to read? Well, that is exactly what happens in facial recognition. Back in 2013 or so, a company in Russia decided to make an app with facial recognition and simply by pointing your phone at anyone, you can then look at their VK profile. The VK app is the Russian equivalent of Facebook. At the time, with their limited tech, they were already 80% accurate finding somebody's face on VK. So if you want to stalk some woman, just take her picture, then you'll be able to find out all her info on VK using this app. At some point, anyone with a large enough collection of photos, either stolen from social media sites or the internet, can accomplish this. Companies that already have a collection of social media data include Spokio, Intellius, Axiom, to name a few. These companies collect all the identifiable information, including your house, your car, your employment records, your legal records, arrests, divorces, lawsuits, and this can be matched to a face. This is with you not even being on the internet. You could be hiding on the internet recently and your past will show up through these third-party databases. And if these companies release an app with facial recognition matched to their databases, we will all be truly zucked. Doxing, real-life stalking will blow up big time and there will be no pseudo-anonymity on the internet any longer or creating a different persona on the internet. The other threat, of course, is with government mass surveillance and Google Facebook surveillance you will not need to be on the internet. Through the sources I mentioned earlier, which include self-driving cars and traffic cameras, your every move will be known and profiled. Your participation and protests will be inhibited because your face will pop up in a database and get you profiled. And this is already an issue in dictatorship countries. Many places in the world have extremely dense camera systems. Places like London and New York City are already known for having lots of security cameras. But with the use of ring cameras, 
the governments are basically getting an expanded infrastructure for free. So there's the capability now for so many players to know every place you've been to. I'm already upset that every time I visit the market, my face is captured at this intersection I cannot avoid. Where possible, I map out locations of cameras on my route and I will take the long route to avoid them. They will of course do license plate recognition anyway, those zuckers. I always pause to see what devices are on every traffic intersection nowadays. I put my visor down while I peek, looking for any unusual devices near the traffic lights. Do I feel free in this land of the free? Not really. Some of you who are young will think that I'm being paranoid, but the difference is I understand the technology. When I was young, I lived in a country with a dictator where you are jailed for having a different idea. So this is not theory to me. If that dictator had access to this information, he would have made sure to make his opponents disappear after he learns who they are. If you're a journalist trying to keep your source private like a Snowden whistleblower, this is going to be extremely difficult. Your source could end up whacked or suicided. There are the real impacts of the loss of privacy when it comes to freedom. Fighting a powerful and corrupt government could be rendered impossible. When facial recognition is rampant, your active participation on the internet is no longer important. I'm sure that Snowden's movements around Moscow are being tracked by multiple cameras. Obviously, the Russians already know where Snowden lives, but it would be scary when you realize that there's no place to hide. Someday you will just find yourself suicided because you don't agree with someone powerful. The newest attack which uses facial recognition is deep fake. Someone can take your face and your voice and use the deep fake app for the video and the Adobe vocal app for voice and basically they can duplicate you saying something else. Someone could come up with a video of me singing in praises about Facebook and the National Zucking Agency. It's scary, so I'm just forewarning you now. If I'm popular enough, someone will do this. In a future world, this will become worse. Privacy will become non-existent in a world with extreme facial recognition. Combine that with your love of Alexa Echo, and we are truly Zuck in a world without privacy. Facial recognition is the final nail on the coffin. The only way to stop this is for us to fight back to counter all this with laws that prevent the collection of too much power with facial recognition. It's really sad that back in the days before mobile phones, people were very sensitive about being chipped. Yet the millennial generation has minimized this. Now with phones tracking your location 24 seven, facial recognition and voice listening of Alexa, the future is truly zucked. It's ripe for some powerful person to misuse like Big Brother in the book 1984. Let's fight back politically, people. Understand that this is important to stop with laws. We have to come up with laws to prevent this collection and abuse of facial recognition data because I have no technological way to stop it. It's that time in the video where I ask you to hit that like button and more importantly, that subscribe button. Folks, this message needs to be heard by the majority. And if you support this channel in this little way, you will allow this message to be heard by more people. Check out the store on Brax.me for Brax routers, Bytes VPN, and the Google phones. And thank you to my patrons. Thank you all for your support.